Hello friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. I am Jenny and we are back here in the perennial house. Going to do another little update on how all these sweet little perennials are doing. If you remember we were here I guess like two weeks ago when we first introduced you to the kickoff of the 2021 nursery tours. So we're back in this space um, and we have added, you will notice over my shoulder, we have a couple of more pots in here. Again, earlier we talked about how the perennials come to us from Walter's Gardens and we pot them up, so forth and so on. So we're here to give you a little update on how everybody is doing. Before we go into actual plants, I want to talk to you too about perennials. So remember when you're buying a perennial, your main investment, shall we say, is in your root system, maybe not the foliage that you see up top. Because if you look at some of these plants, they just look like, you know, pots of soil and there's no active foliage in them, on them yet. So I have right here, this is Proven Winners Lavender. This is the Sweet Romance Lavender that so many people love because it's just a great plant. Um, and if you look at just the plant itself right now, you know, it's just a little kind of a teenager size plant, I would say. But I thought this was really important. So there's not a whole lot of foliage up top because Jerry has not really been pushing the heat in this greenhouse. I mean, right now it's, it's comfortable, but it's not, I would not say it's warm at all. Um, but not a lot of growth up here, but there is, I'm gonna let Jerry zoom in on that. Do you see those little roots sticking out from the bottom of the pot? That's a sign of a really happy perennial. In the winter, fall, winter, early, early spring, that's what's happening to your perennials, your trees, and your shrubs. You don't see the top growth their roots are growing. So that's why here in the South, when we have such hot, hot, humid summers, we say that the best time to plant your perennials, trees and shrubs is in the fall through the winter because that's when your roots are growing. If you have a really healthy root system, then you're gonna have a really pretty plant up top. So I just thought that was an interesting note to say. And also obviously we have the lavender for sale. Going through here, Jerry just potted these up when we did that video about the perennials. So I wanted to show you, I mean, look at this. So the lavender, of course, lavender loves it hot, right? This is the Color Spires Crystal Blue Salvia. And again, I show the tags. Remember, if you need more information, go to provenwinners.com. They'll tell you everything you need to know. This is hardy in zones three through eight. So there you go. But look, already, lots of great foliage. Clearly, since this is a perennial in zones three to eight, it can handle cold climates really well. So it probably loves this, I don't know, what would you say, it's 50 degrees in here. It's about 50 degrees in here. And so it's very happy. So it's put on all this new growth ever since just right about a week ago that Jerry was potting these up. So the crystal um, blue, I love it because it's that obviously a really clear, blue icy blue be great it's going to be like an 18 to 20 inches tall of course the pollinators love salvia so that's a great one um then of course um i was going to show you this where did it go oh here it is we love the coreopsis this is uptick golden bronze and coreopsis is a great one but you see already we've got a little bud on there Coreopsis is great because it's just a fantastic perennial, a no fuss, really super easy, beautiful blooms on it. It's a very kind of like a little, a small daisy-like bloom on. Um, like I said, low maintenance, zones five to nine, very versatile. I will trim mine back. I have it in the ground in several spots. I trim it back and it just flushes and it's just a continuous bloomer. You don't have to deadhead it. It's just a great one. Obviously, that this one is a full sun, but I thought that was fun to show you um, because it has a little bloom on it. And then I alluded to this plant when we were talking about those perennials coming. This is, let me clean off the tag for you. This is Ascot Rainbow. And this is one of my all-time favorite foliage perennials. It'll do a flower, but it's 
kind of an interesting flower, you really get it for its foliage. And right now, you're looking at it and you're going, well, that's just one little tiny little stick. But what it does is it, as it grows, it'll send up multiple of these shoots. So it's this really full plant with this gorgeous color in your garden. And it's super soft. So to touch it, it's almost reminiscent of like a lamb's ear. It's not quite as fuzzy as a lamb's ear. And then it has this really unique earthy smell. I love it. I'm going to put it kind of in a in a swatch um, and it's just it's gorgeous and it is hardy in zones five to nine so again extremely extremely versatile and you can just do all sorts of fun stuff with it but it gets to be about 20 inches tall so it'll bring some height to your garden so if you want to put it in the middle of your bed it's a great one and then i want to say it's full yeah sun to part shade so again very very versatile but ascot rainbow is just a great perennial and then look at these. These were the beast. These were the beautiful beast that Jerry was potting up. Jenny's doing gardening yoga over here. These are those baptiza. So you get a good look at the sign and then I'm going to rotate. Look at that. Look how much it's already starting to pop up. So this is vanilla cream. Proven Winners has some amazing Baptiza. If you're not familiar with Baptiza, they're one of the earliest spring bloomers in your garden. They do this gorgeous like vase-like habit on them. Extremely um, versatile, easy, low maintenance. This one's gonna be hardy in zones four to nine. I mean, really. And then it has those gorgeous colors on it. Gives you some height. I keep my, I have the lemon meringue one beautiful yellow it's kind of towards my back in my cottage garden but this one is pastel yellow buds and then they'll turn like a creamy white so extremely pretty um, and it'll be like three feet tall so when you're already buying a root system that's this massive imagine what it's gonna be like once it starts really going Jerry says to turn pivot there we go and there's tons of baptizes um, I know we have talked about this a couple of times um, and it's been on social media a bit here lately about us doing beginning online ordering and shipping plants. We are working feverishly to get all that done. Of course, we'll do the annuals. We will do perennials, those kinds of things. So once that system is up and ready to go, you can order to your heart's content. But there's tons of things. Look, look at these daylilies. We talked about daylilies before. Look, all this green foliage in a week. This is what's happened. That it had just a little bit of, of, of green when we first planted them up, but that's why we love daylilies because they're so extremely easy. Zones three to nine. This particular one is the raspberry eclipse. I mean, gorgeous color. Look at that. Love that. Of course, daylilies love the full sun, so that's a great one. Um, Let's see. I'll give you an update on some of the ones that have been, we potted up in the fall, end of the summer, um, and they have been kind of sitting in here. Some of them take a little bit longer than others, again, because some are really hot loving plants, hot weather loving plants, like your echinacea, so they're just still kind of hanging out. But if you will notice already, the dianthus is really starting to green up. Once we Jerry socks the heat to them, they will green up. This whole container will be full of foliage and they'll have the gorgeous blooms on them. This one is Paint the Town Magenta. We love the whole Paint the Town series. Nice and low, it's a great ground cover. Um, those gorgeous kind of hot pink blooms. Again, it's hardy in zones four to nine, really low key, easy maintenance. I, there's, I call them a semi-evergreen because even in our cottage garden right now, you can see where the plants are. They don't look fantastic, but you can see them so they don't completely disappear. Um, but they're an early bloomer in the spring and they just smell so good. So sweet, so sweet. Now, what I think we're gonna do is because Jerry and the crew finished up potting all the other bare roots up at the production greenhouses. So we are gonna go head up there and see what fantastic plants are there.
Alrighty folks, we are up here at the existing greenhouse, the production greenhouse. You can see probably behind me, uh, this is also kind of the staging, construction staging spot for the new greenhouse that's right behind us. I wanted to, we, these obviously have not been potted up. These are some Eucharas, these are proven winners, but I wanted to show you some, one, we're talking about such a nice, big, massive root system. I mean, look at that. You're not getting a little tea tiny plant but also to show you the difference, these are both considered kind of the purple um, Euchara. This one is the silver gumdrop. So it does have that great silvery sheen to it. And then this one is wildberry. And wildberry, when you put them together, you can see how much more purple this one is. They both are just such great perennials they are evergreen. They're mostly grown for their foliage. They will bloom, but it's mostly as a foliage plant. Um, and they are both going to be, now the wild berry, the more purple one, it can be sun or shade where the um, silver gumdrop is going to be more of a shade perennial. But these do great at the front of your bed. Um, they do great in pots and containers. I've used eucharas in like mixed containers for years and they do great so they just give you lots of neat different texture and color in your garden and in your containers now come on down here and then this is where we have those other perennials that we were talking about <laughs> we were talking about what was over here and jerry's like baptiza there's so much baptiza we have tons of baptiza but remember i was telling you about the um, baptiza that i have in my cottage garden well this is it it's the lemon meringue it's one of my favorite plants, especially because it's, I think, a, a spring bloomer, and we're just all craving that gorgeous color in the spring, any kind of color in the spring. And this lemon meringue is just a pure yellow, creamy yellow, I mean, just like a lemon meringue pie, and they just have these stalks. And every year, your base gets bigger and bigger. They don't send out runners, they don't send out seeds. Their base just gets bigger, and it's just more of flowers every year. They are fantastic. Um, brand new again these were just potted up like a day ago this is proven winners new firefly sunshine and this is a yarrow and again when we flip around here look how much it's already filling up this pot so you're going to get a great plant with a really nice established root system right there and it's going to be one of the best ones for holding its color so this is new bright yellow flowers with the dark gray green foliage i mean it's perfect and in fact a little side note i don't know if y'all keep up with this but the pantone colors of the year you know every year they come out this is going to be like the colors of the year is going to be blah 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 well this one actually fits in perfect because it's like illuminating yellow and then a gray now, not that this has a gray foliage, I mean, it's a green gray, but if you by any chance are following the Pantone colors of the year and would like to add something to your garden collection, well then this would be the perfect plant to do it. That just kind of hit me. We were talking about it this morning. I was on a Zoom call with some PW people and anyway, it's just fun. Now, another great salvia, we've done this one for a couple of years, is the Indiglo Girl. Again, this is a great perennial salvia with just deep, deep colored, like a purple um, bloom on it. Extremely nice, 20 to 22 inches tall. It's gonna be hardy in zones three to eight. So again, very cold tolerant. Um, and salvias are naturally deer resistant because they're in that kind of the mint family. So when deer don't like things that are either rough on their tongue or have like a smell to them. So salvias are a great one to be deer resistant, rabbit resistant, if you have that issue in your yard. Um, now, blueberry sundae, there's no point in me bringing up the pot because you know what a bare root baptiza looks by now. Blueberry sundae, again, just that um, gorgeous, vibrant indigo blue color on it. So if you're looking to add some blue to your garden, this one would be a great one. Remember those baptiza are right at three feet tall. Then we've got daylilies. Now, this is a new one for us. This is tiger swirl. This is part of the Rainbow Rhythm series from Proven Winners. They have some of the best daylilies on the market. Some of the best that I've ever grown. 
they just have massive, huge blooms on them and they last for a long time. Like they constantly, not a day lily, the flower itself only lasts for a day, but as far as the continuous blooms, they just keep coming and coming for weeks and weeks and weeks on end. Um, so this, the blooms on this one are gonna be six and a half inches wide. So just massive, make a huge impact in your garden and just a gorgeous color on that. Really like that tiger swirl. Then let's see, what do we have down here? I don't even know what we have. Oh, the denim and lace. So this is what the denim and lace looks like when it comes to us. I mean, it's just sticks, right? No foliage, just some sticks. And of course, denim and lace is a Russian sage, a great, gorgeous, silvery green foliage on it with those really pretty purple blue flowers. Um, we do have some from the other season that are over here. Um, just great aromatic really nice they have a nice minty smell to them just the foliage really great love the sun love dry conditions really low maintenance on that so let's come down here and check jenny's you know touch and die section if you remember we talked about that um the other day i'm trying to see if we have some new oh we do look at this I haven't been up here this week. So this is the Veronica. And look at that. All this new foliage on it. This is purple Leia. I would say purple Leia. Um, so this is going to be a great one. So it is happy and showing lots of good color. And then the daisies are doing well. They're nice and perky. Look at that. So remember, this is the new one. This is the spun silk. Now these are going to be introduced in 2022. Walters Gardens sent us these trial plants just to test out to see how they do in our garden so we can give them some feedback, get a little experience growing them. So these are not going to be for sale this year. So the touch and die corner is um, these are not for sale. You're going to have to wait at least a year for those guys. So those are doing well. The, um, oh, oh look, we have flocks. The flocks is emerging. So this is um, the black back light. I want to say black light, but it's not. Back light phlox. Of course, that gorgeous, pure white bloom on it. But look, we have growth. We have signs of life. It's fantastic. It is so exciting. There's always just something going on. You know, you never know. You Life is springing up everywhere. Anyway, we're going to wrap it up because I feel like I'm just sitting here rambling. Thank you so much, as always, for joining us on this little video, this tour. We will make sure to bring you updates on all the annuals that we potted up. We have another big shipment coming up this week, right, Jerry? Yeah, yeah this coming week, um, we're going to have another massive amount of annuals coming in from Proven Winners. We'll be doing hanging baskets so we can show you how we pot up hanging baskets, that whole process, everything. So still working on the greenhouse. Jerry got the heater hung so the gas company is coming to hook it up I believe on Monday or Tuesday so things are progressing quite nicely as always we appreciate you thank you so much for all your kind words and encouragement and your support we truly appreciate it y'all have a great day and we'll see you in the next video bye friends